Good morning. Oh, you sound good and strong this morning. Welcome. What a beautiful day we have been given. The sun's shining. It's warming up outside. The crocuses are popping up out of the ground. And we get to be together. What a gift this day is already. I welcome you to church today, an opportunity to celebrate life, an opportunity to be together and support one another, encourage each other, and to grow together in our faith. We stand so that we can begin our worship and share in our call to worship. Everyone who thirsts. All who are hungry for righteousness. All who need the help of God. During the time of Lent, we have an opportunity to focus on our confessions. An opportunity to let the seed go deep into our souls and find what it is that not only we uh, can confess, not for the sake of being wrong, but for the sake of growing and leaning on our God. So let us pray together our prayer of confession. Holy God, we confess that we have grown complacent in our response to you. You set before us a rich feast of blessing. But we are drawn to lesser things that cannot satisfy. You call us to attend to urgent needs in the world, but we indulge our own desires. Forgive us when we fall short of your claim upon our lives. Disturb our complacency and quicken our desire for a more fruitful life. Be patient, we pray, as we amend who we are in the hope of becoming who you intend us to be. The good news is this, that God has loved us, loves us right now, and will always love us. This is the good news that brings us new life. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Actually, I told a story. You stand <laughs> <laughs> Jesus' time for reading the scripture, you stood up, and to preach, you sat down. So I just got a little ahead of myself this morning. Our scripture today comes from Isaiah chapter 55, verse 1 through 9. Call everyone who hears and thirsts, come to the waters, and you that have no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money. And without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me, and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen, so that you may live. 
I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, for sh- sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. See, you shall call nations that you do not know, and nations that do not know you shall run to you. Because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their way and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them return to the Lord, that he may have mercy on them. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. And my thoughts in your thoughts. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Yeah. 
it doesn't really matter which coin we get, we're just each going to take three. We show the person's hand. What they give you. Yep. And what are we putting these in for? I guess. How many did I give? I got them. Now everybody has three. So we're putting these in one for Faith, one for Hope, and one for Love. Those are the pots, don't we? Here, I think that was yours. I got stuck under the lid. You want to put it in? Okay. Oh. Um, so next week, we're going to collect these. So you remember your boxes next week. I'll tell you in just a second. What are you going to bring next week? Yep. And you're, we're going to give them. We're all going to bring our boxes forward and leave them at the um, altar next week as our offering for one great hour of sharing. So we're all going to bring them next week. Okay, it's going to be part of our offering. And so this week, as you drop your money in, let's be praying that our dollars and our cents and our quarters and nickels, dimes, and pennies, that they will find the people and places who need to know of God's love most through clean water and enough food to eat and friends to share the life. You can already smell bread. We're having communion today. That's why bread is here. I'm glad you're hungry. That's the best time to eat communion. Why don't we say a prayer together? It's the best bread in the world. It is the best bread in the world. It sure is. Let's say a prayer. Lord, thank you for this opportunity to be together as your children. Thank you for giving these steps for us to sit on that we can share faith, hope, and love together by dropping coins in a box that remind us that we have enough to share with others who need us to share. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much. If you don't know when to drop your coins in the box, these calendars are up here for everybody to take one if you would like. As we go to God in a spirit of prayer, I would offer a couple of prayers to you, folks to hold on to. Ashton Wyrick is in the midst of some testing, uh, is in need of our prayers, he and his family. Adelita Swain is back at home. Ricky Clapp, Wayne Reese, Scott Andrews, Helen Busick. Barbara Reese Fogelman, the Dennis McGee family. Are there others that we need to be holding in our hearts? We certainly continue to pray for other parts of the world that are suffering from war and unrest in the Ukraine and Russia and Afghanistan. Are there others? Let us go to God in the spirit of prayer. Well, God, today the scripture reminds us that you beckon for us to come. To come and eat and drink at your table. A table where there is plenty and never scarcity. A table where there is always enough chairs for all of us. A table where we don't have to elbow our way in to make sure that we get there first to get the best seat because all the seats are good. We don't have to wonder which way the bowls are passed. If we'll be at the first of the line or the last of the line because it doesn't matter at this table there is enough, and it satisfies. Thank
thank you for being a God that satisfies our longings. Thank you for knowing the hairs on our heads and welcoming us into your presence. Thank you for calling us your children. And as your children, sometimes, oh God, we know that we don't come to this table as often as you call us. We know, oh God, that we seek other paths. We know that we do other things, that we use our time and energy and money to do things that sometimes even drive us away from you. And so even though we know you have already forgiven us, help us to turn away from that kind of living and turn towards you. But most importantly today, oh God, we ask that you would remind us that we are worthy of your love, not because of what we do, but because of who you are. That we are created in the face, in the image of you. And that is worthy of a meal and a life well lived. So as we walk towards this table later in this service, infuse each of us with an understanding of what it means to call ourselves your beloved, to be loved and named and claimed and called and fed by a God who loves us more than we can imagine, who forgives us, more times than we can count. And who judges us with mercy, even when we do not judge others with mercy. There are many places in this world today who need to know of your mercy, God. There are many households on the very roads that we live. There are friends and family and strangers alike who need to know of your power and strength. Be with those who are facing surgery, those who are awaiting tests, those who have heard news that they did not care for, or news that leads them to believe that life will always have to be this way. Oh God, make a path where there seems to be no path. Make a way where there seems not to be a way forward. Be with our world that we might all just pause for just a moment and recalibrate to what is most important. To put down our swords of power and pick up the plowshares that tend your earth draw attention to your goodness and mercy. And as we are living day by day into the call of discipleship, hear us as we join our voices together, united, and pray the prayer our brother Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever.
of all of our hearts be pleasing in your sight for you alone are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Perhaps the most important thing we bring to another person is the silence in us. Not the sort of silence that is filled with unspoken criticism or hard withdrawal. Not the kind of silence that's waiting for somebody to do something wrong. The sort of silence that is a place of refuge, of rest, of accepting someone as they are. We are all hungry for this kind of silence. This kind of trusting silence is a place of great power and healing. A mother and a father were struggling to be the parents they had hoped to be. They had dreamed of butterfly kisses in the mornings and quiet nights of doing homework together. They had hoped for nights swinging in the backyard, catching lanterns of fireflies before a good night book and a lullaby leading to closed eyes and a day brought to an end. They imagined creative play and dirty kids who loved to make mud pies in the dirt on a spring day. They smiled at the imagined laughter and giggles and toddler squeals that would fill their home. But instead of this kind of life, their home was filled with crying and screaming, the kind that comes from anguish and pain over simple activities. Their child felt excruciating pain, they eventually learned, but she brushed her teeth. She felt that there were pine cones in her shoes when her parents tried to get them on her feet. 
She thought there were needles in her clothes, and who would put clothes on if there were needles in them? Soon it was clear to the parents that life seemed it had taken a permanent turn. What they had hoped for, well, was it a phase? But this was not passing, but becoming all too normal in their family's life. They sought professional help. Two things came from the time with their doctors and therapists. They learned that they had an amazingly brave child who was struggling with severe sensory motor dysfunction. The way she sensed the world was skewed. Soft things to us felt prickly to her. Snug fitting clothes and seat belts and shoes actually were painful. A drop of water on her skin felt like fire. Who would take a bath? if they thought they were burning. To sit still in a chair gave the sensation that she was falling into space, not tethered to anything for the world. The family learned about their child's needs. And secondly, they learned to be silent. Mornings were the worst. The hardest parts of the day happened in the morning when everyone was rushed and forced into a timeline that rarely happened. Like the mountain climber on that game from The Price is Right. Remember that one? Most mornings the mountain climber went too high and fell off the cliff before everyone was ready for the day. Instead, the morning ended with the father fuming out the door to get to work on time so he could keep his job. A screaming kid who would be hours too late for school before she could calm herself down. And a mom who had no tools in her tool belt for such things. After a few weeks of professional health, the morning routine was revealed and the utter despair was plastered across the face of the parents. When do you start to get anxious about not getting out of the house on time, she asked. The last ten minutes of the morning of the hardest, the father said. The doctor said, I want you to try something. Instead of yelling reminders of how late you're going to be for ten solid minutes, I want you to sit down for those two minutes. Sit down right beside your dog. I don't want you to say anything. I want you to sit beside her in silence. Don't worry. You won't be any later than you normally are. I only want you to do it for ten minutes. You're going to spend the same amount of time, just ten minutes, but instead of barking reminders of time, I want you to sit beside her and be totally silent. But here's the deal breaker. While you're not speaking out loud, I want you to think about one thing in particular. I want you to think about how much you love your daughter and how brave you think she is. I want you to think about sending her encouragement and support to finish those last difficult tasks so she can get out of the door to school on time, so she can feel good about herself and know that she has achieved something great. I just want you to sit still and be silent and support her. A highly skilled AIDS doctor once told me that she keeps a picture of her grandmother in her home and sits before it for a few minutes every day before she leaves for work. Her grandmother had bit her rock. Once, when Louisa was very small, she experienced her first death of a beloved animal. She had been devastated. Her parents had encouraged her not to be sad, telling her that the kitten was in heaven with God. Despite these assurances, she had not been comforted. She had prayed to God, asking for her animal back, but she did not get a response. In her anguish, she had turned to her grandmother and asked why. Her grandmother had not told her the same thing that everyone else had told her. Instead, she had simply held her and reminded her of the time when her grandfather, her husband, had died. She, too, had prayed to God, but God had also not responded the way she had hoped. She did not get her grandfather. Louisa had turned into the soft warmth of her grandmother's shoulder and sobbed. When finally she was able to look up, she saw that her grandmother was crying too. 
She had no more answers than when she first approached her grandmother, yet a great loneliness had lifted from her. The doctor told me, I know a great deal about AIDS, but what I really want to be for my patients is a lab, a place from which they can face what they have to face and not be alone. Like Harriet Tubman singing, Go down, Moses, way down in Egypt's land. In the thicket of those trees, an underbrush in the side of the woods, Isaiah today calls out to the exiled people, Ho, oh, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And you that have no money, come, buy and eat. Come by wine and milk without money, without price. The Israelite people had been scattered during the Babylonian War. They had been captured and scattered to lands that were not their own. The people were separated and sent to different locations anywhere but where they wanted to be. Their souls, even if not their mouths, were parched. On the path, leading tourists and natives alike down into the Grand Canyon and the hot and arid land are signs that read, Stop! Drink water! You are thirsty whether you know it or not. Are you thirsty? The people in exile have been pushed to the margins. In light of this passage, it's worthwhile to consider the economics of food and water. In Lamentations, conquered people had complained of the high cost of what had once been available for free. Our inheritance has been turned over to strangers, our homes to aliens. We have become orphans, fatherless. Our mothers are like widows. We must pay for the water we drink. The wood we get must be bought. They had lost not only their place, the things of comfort, the things that brought them joy, the laps that brought them comfort. They were now having to pay with money that they didn't have for things that had always been free. My grandmother Rosa never told me why she did it this way, but when something was really important, when she was overcome with emotion, which happened often, especially when she prayed. She would whisper the words, so poignant and true. I especially remember coming home from college to see her, her not expecting my visit, knocked on the door, heard her feet pitter to the door, unlock it, and see my face, and whisper and giggle all at the same time. Christy, I see Christy. Everybody deserves somebody that welcomes them and says, Oh, how are you? Are you thirsty? Have something to drink? Are you hungry? Come, eat. Don't worry about not having any money. You don't need it here. For what we have, is what we need. This meal, this love, this welcome that can level us to the core of our being and to remember that we are the world. to get her seatbelt on, 
she learned all about what it was to be sensory and how she too can enjoy life and the parents by being silent. Learn how to be good students of a life well lived. As we go to God during this time, we have been invited to this table that has been set with love and great mercy. We are invited to this place that beckons our tears, that beckons our limitations, that beckons all the ways in which we have traveled another path, and all the ways in which we desire to come to this place. So as we go, know that we do not travel alone. For you said you come and share all my sorrows, and you said you'd be there for all my tomorrows. I came so close to sending you away. But just like you promised, you came here to stay. I just have to pray. And Jesus said, come to the water, stand by my side. I know you are thirsty. Won't be denied. I felt every tear drop when in darkness you cried, and I strove to remind you that for those tears I died. Come to the table, for all things are now ready. Come, are you thirsty? Come and eat and drink. Do you not have any money? Are you penniless? That's okay. Come, for this table is for you. serving communion this morning. Come on forward. We're going to wash up, do the ritual washing here, and we invite you to come forward. We are going to serve communion a little differently than we have been serving it. There will be two stations on either side, one with the bread and one with the juice. When you come forward, they will put a piece of bread in your hand, and they will offer you a cup, and there are trash cans for your cup on the other side, so you can walk for nothing while you are here. Come, for all things are now ready.
this morning for filling in for Susan while she is away. She'll be back next week and we appreciate um, your willingness to wave your arms and help us sing. Our Gather Learn Grow today, adults will be in the classrooms, um, children and youth will be downstairs, and the new members class, um, I got it wrong last week, I know that's shocking that I got something wrong, but uh, we're going to start this week and it will be in the sanctuary today instead of downstairs. Board of Christian Education meets at 1.30 today. If you serve on that committee, please come and be with us. Bible study is at 10 on Wednesday. We have a good time together. Some real honest discussion and look at the scripture for the next Sunday, which has become a meaningful part of our practice, both mine and everyone who comes. So we hope that you can join us. If you are looking to come to that Bible study, but it's at a time that is not suitable for you, Please let me know. If we know that there's others who want to come in the evening, then we will accommodate those needs. Handbell practice and choir practice uh, all happens this week at their normal times. Youth meeting today at... Oh, no handbells this week, okay? Um, youth meeting today is from 3 to 5, but we have somebody else who has a youth announcement, um, and then I will uh, let them tell you more about them. I'm Linda Shue, I'm the chairman of the search committee, and uh, we wanted to let you know that we have hired an interim youth director, Caitlin Gossett, one of our own church members, who is going to take us to school. And if she'd like to come up at this time, I think she has a few announcements to make to you. So we are really happy to have her on board working with the children. We are so excited. Good morning, everyone. How's everyone doing? All right, so I grew up here, and I'm very really excited to be in this position to get back to where I grew up and where my faith began. So thank you all for this opportunity again. I'm excited to share what I learned at school as well as what I learned here and put together for the youth. So excited for that. Um, Next time, have some events where a bar already planned in the works, so you can be looking out for them. First, we have April 10th. We're going to do a youth Easter egg hunt. So put that on your calendars if you're a youth. You can come on it. Uh, we'll have our own extravaganza. Um, also, April 12th is a Zaxby's fundraiser night. We're going to start off with a nice fundraiser for the youth to get. Um, for the next event, which is April 30th, which is a youth remodel day, so we're going to raise money for that day. So if anybody wants to participate in those days, just let me know and reach out and we'll get to the organizing things. But if y'all have any questions, just let me know. Um, so we can start. Yes. Yes, that's for the children, right? We are we're going to do one for the youth. <laughs> yes, on the 10th at 5. Okay. So all that will be sent to you for the newsletter. <laughs> but, yeah, so if you're a youth, come out today at 3 for the hike and get to know each other. So. But thanks, everyone. Caitlin has already met with the youth, been with them a few times, and, um, We've all gotten to scoop some cotton balls up with a blindfold on and a plastic spoon, see if we can get them in a bowl. We all learned it's a lot easier when we take our blindfolds off and look at Jesus instead of trying to go at it blindly. So thank you, Caitlin. We are so excited to have you uh, at the church in this capacity. Uh, we've 
watched many and have watched you grow up, and you have arrived at this place where you are giving back and you are making a difference, and we are so grateful for you. Thank you for saying yes. said reducing the amount of candy. I just wanted to say it's a justice issue. Last year we had a two-year-old leaving with five pounds of candy and, and, and he was struggling. So we just, you know, wanted to make that good for everybody. Um, styrofoam collection. Um, as, as you know, um, April is our month to celebrate Earth Day. Hopefully every day is that day, but um, we celebrate that in April. And Board of Christian Education, along with the youth, are um, hosting a styrofoam collection day, as that's not a very friendly thing to throw into the garbage can and into the wastelands. So on March 26th, next Saturday in the morning, like 9 to 12, 9 to 1, you can come and drop your styrofoam off if you haven't already dropped it off at the church. Tell your neighbors and your friends, we will hold on to it for you and take it to the recycling center for styrofoam in Greensboro. And it will be made down into little nuggets of pressed styrofoam that will be turned into other things um, that it can be used for. I'll spare you that list right now, but just know it can be used for other things. So um, come and participate in that next Sunday if you would like. And then lastly, I want to let you know that our playground is finished. Gloria, do you have anything you want to announce to us about April 3rd? The playground dedication will be April 3rd. That means we, we did it. They say uh, waiting uh, makes the heart grow fonder, I suppose. So we have been waiting a long time for this day. So April 3rd, come and join us for worship. And then after worship, we will have festivities um, and maybe even a meal down at the um, playground so that we can let the children lead us down the slide. Um, I know they've been trying it out, so they know the way. Will you stand? And now we are being called to be silent in the kind of way that brings about love and encouragement to those around us. So be careful what you speak and be careful what you listen to about yourselves. Be careful what you do and be careful about the ways in which you expend your energy this week that it might be to the glory of God. Go, knowing Thank you. 
Thank you.